this has been one of the craziest 24 hours for the WWE in a while. There's so much news, so much that has happened this morning alone. Let's talk about it. But before we get to it, please guys, do your boy a favor, hit that like button, share, subscribe, comment your thoughts, help me grow my channel as I discuss WWE and WWE 2K news consistently. Now let's get to it. We begin with the breaking news of the day. Monday Night Raw has finally found its home. It's coming to Netflix. Starting in January 2025, Netflix will exclusively stream WWE Raw in the US, Canada, UK, and Latin America every single week all year long. The agreement between WWE and Netflix will be 10 years long in a $5 billion deal with an option for Netflix to extend for an additional 10 years and to opt out after the initial five years. Along with this news, COO and president of WWE, Mark Shapiro states that the WWE and Netflix will look to do documentaries on the characters and superstars of the WWE and so on over the course of the deal. This is extremely shocking news. I did not expect them to go to Netflix. I kind of thought that they would go to a streaming service because that's like the main type of rumors that's been out there. I thought it would be Amazon more than Netflix because I didn't hear much about Netflix being in the race. And plus this is like some groundbreaking stuff. Like I know a lot of people, a lot of companies are going to have their eye on the WWE and see how this deal is handled. It was also reported that Netflix is trying to drive revenue by cutting down on subscription sharing and pushing viewers towards its ad tier membership. And they have made a few attempts at live programming in its history, but this is the first time that they've ever struck a long-term sports rights deal. And on top of all of that, Netflix will now become the home for all WWE shows and specials outside the US as available inclusive of Raw and WWE's other weekly shows being SmackDown and NXT since they already have their own homes now on TV, as well as the company's premium live events. So what does this mean for Peacock? I'm a little bit confused because isn't Peacock's deal with WWE up until 2026 and this Netflix deal starts in January 2025? But also, USA's deal with Monday Night Raw ends in September of 2024. So there's October, November, December, where as of right now, we don't really have a place for Raw confirmed. So like, will the USA extend this deal? Will Netflix take Raw early? Will they have to find somewhere else? Will they be on Peacock? I guess that news will come out eventually, but that's interesting. But another question that people had was that will Raw still be three hours? And as of right now, it seems like the answer is yes, because that is what was reported by TKO, that Monday Night Raw will continue as a three hour long show, even on Netflix. <sighs> Can they please just make it two hours? They have time to reconsider this, right? Will there also be commercial breaks and ads? I guess, yes, Netflix is trying to do that. But let's look at the bright side. There's good and bad, but from the bright side, we no longer have to depend on YouTube clips or waiting the next day on, what was it, uh, Hulu to watch Raw with all of those ads too, or however you consume Raw. If you miss it or you miss something important from the show, we can just watch it right there on Netflix. We can rewind it. We can watch it anytime you want that same night. So there's a plus in my opinion, but on the downside, Netflix is already so expensive as it is they keep raising their prices it seems like every three six months i mean who knows knowing netflix right now what are they like close to 20 dollars, if not already above that a year from now in january of 2025 they could be at 30 dollars an hour or something crazy like that oh boy right after they got the announcement that Raw was going to have a new home, we got news that is almost just as crazy, if not even more. 
that The Rock is now a board member of TKO. Now just to clarify, because I've seen some confusion, he's not a scriptwriter. he doesn't control the show, he's just a board member, he doesn't have say on what goes on on a WWE television, not really. He has other powers, but not really, not that big. It's more of the business side of things, so for you guys that don't understand what a board member is, he's not going to be the new Triple H, he's not going to change the scripts. But also, The Rock has some good news for himself as he now has been granted full ownership of The Rock name trademark. That's great for him. But The Rock news doesn't end there. There is more teases for The Rock versus Roman Reigns. This is what he had to say. Performers, we could possibly put on the greatest and the biggest WrestleMania of all time. So you're saying wow. there's a chance? There's a so there's chance. A ch from this, I don't think that the match is happening at WrestleMania 40 anymore. Dwayne saying that he's a long gamer, that he likes a long build. We already knew this with the John Cena versus Rock buildup that lasted over a year. And I think that they're going to take the same route with The Rock versus Roman Reigns. I don't know how soon they're going to start this build, but I think it starts after WrestleMania. Whether Roman Reigns wins against Cody Rhodes or not, the battle will be for the title of Tribal Chief. So like I said before in other videos, the title isn't necessary. It makes the match bigger, but it doesn't need the title. But The Rock saying there's a chance, I think that it's going to happen as soon as WrestleMania 42 or possibly at a Saudi Arabia show later on in this year. Or maybe they'll have more than one match. Maybe it'll be like how Brock and Roman was a couple of years ago where they had that Saudi Arabia match, which led to their WrestleMania match. It could be something like that, but who knows? We will see, but the match is happening. Alongside with all of this crazy news, we also got near confirmation that Kazushka Okada is WWE bound, potentially starting in NXT first. And I am not the biggest fan of this. I guess I'm not too against it, but he's a big name in the world of wrestling. Like, you can't put him in NXT now. Like, it barely made sense for them to do it for Shinsuke in what, 2015 or 16? So for Okada in 2024 to go to NXT first, no, no, no. Put him on the main roster now. Put him on the biggest stage now. Debut him either at WrestleMania or the night after. Don't put him in NXT. Like, I'm not too against the idea. I get it. He's a draw. He will bring a lot of eyes to NXT. But I think he's just too big of a name at this point. So if he does go to NXT, then I don't see him being there for any more than six months at the most. Maybe not even past SummerSlam. Well, depending on when he debuts, but yeah. Here's a quick Monday Night Raw recap, breaking down the biggest things that happened last night. Starting off with Seth Rollins opening the show he came out limping when he got to the ring and took his shades off. You could see the tears in his eyes. And he told us the sad news that he has suffered from a grade two tear of his MCL and a partially torn medial meniscus. He also confirms that he will be out for three to four months with surgery, or at least that's what the doctors told him. He confirms that the injury occurred when he attempted that springboard moonsault. We were all speculating for a week of when exactly the injury occurred, but yeah, that was the confirmation right there. Then Gunther interrupts him and he says that he is saddened to see that Seth Rollins is hurt and won't make it to WrestleMania. But then Seth says that he doesn't care what the doctors told him. He will rehab harder than ever. He will walk into WrestleMania with the title. Gunther then says that if he wins the Royal Rumble match, he will choose Seth Rollins as his opponent and that he will target his knees, his back, and everything that is not 100%. Seth responds by saying, if you challenge me, if you win the Royal Rumble, remember who you're coming after. Mic drop. Gunther then says, you better remember who's coming after you. Then they shake hands. And that's the end of their little promo. It's so crazy how many storylines we are getting leading up to the Royal Rumble match. 
how many fields we have, how many potential great matches there are, how many scenarios they have built up. Like, it's just crazy. Like, my pick to win the Rumble is still CM Punk. I think we're still getting CM Punk and Seth Rollins. That seems like a plan. In fact, I am certain that that's the plan because otherwise, why wouldn't you just have Seth Rollins drop the title? So yeah, that is definitely the plan, but still, there's still a lot of interesting stories. They could still swerve us, who knows? And speaking of CM Punk, the CM Punk and Cody Rhodes face-to-face -face did not disappoint. It was a pretty long segment, so I'm not going to break down everything, just the main points. And it opens up with Cody Rhodes saying his line, what do you want to talk about? CM Punk saying, I want to talk about your dad. And so they do. <laughs> but yeah, this part of the promo was kind of boring. Like it opened up pretty slow. It was just going in circles, but then it picked up out of nowhere. They begin talking about the Royal Rumble match. Cody Rhodes says the obvious line that they always say, uh, there's no friends in the Royal Rumble match. CM Punk says, I know there's no friends in the Royal Rumble match. I've been in more of them than you have. But what about Sunday morning? Because I can separate business from personal. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. And then Punk gets close to Cody Rhodes, looks him in the eye and says, can you? Because you grew up in this business. Personal to you is this business. I had to scratch and crawl to get to where I am. And later on, he says, we have two very different paths, but one very similar goal. I didn't have Dusty Rhodes as my father. My father was a regular guy. He was an electrician, which is ironic. I am more of the American dream than you are. And this is where things got heated. Then Cody Rhodes, who looked obviously bothered by this, talks about the pipe bomb and how revolutionary and how inspiring it was for even himself. He says, CM Punk, you left. You really left. You didn't pass the torch on the way out. You dropped it, but I picked it up. Everything that you talked, I walked. And that makes me more CM Punk than you. And this is where it got really, really interesting. CM Punk takes his jacket off. He gets in Cody Rhodes' face. Cody Rhodes, you have been carrying this company for the last two years. And right before you're about to cross that finish line and finish your story, what's that in the distance? A much bigger superstar that hasn't been here in a very, very long time, ready to take it all away from you. And I'm talking about The Rock. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I'm talking about me. And Cody responds saying, there's only one direction I can go, and that's forward. And that's going through you. They both drop their mics. They get into each other's faces. The Royal Rumble is going to be special. And CM Punk is winning. Also on Raw, this happened. Yeah, you better stay away. Stay far away from a wrestling ring. We don't want you. Go away. But that is all of the news I have for you right now. It's been a crazy, crazy 24, 30, however many hours it's been. Today alone has been crazy. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Please follow my social media accounts that are seen on the screen right now. Like, share, subscribe, comment below what you guys think. And you guys stay smooth.